This is Jo from the Global Textile Hub and I'm joined this morning with Judy, one of the team members from Queensland on the East Coast, Susan Feller, the lead juror for our Reimagined Collaboration with a Difference exhibition that's going to be held online next year and Jackie Abrams are our two jurors from the USA. Our third juror, Janet DeBoer, can't be with us today. I'm going to turn this conversation over now to uh, Judy. The challenge that we've set for the artists is to collaborate and to address the theme of making the ordinary extraordinary. The important thing now to our way of thinking is that the artists involved will need to develop an artist statement I've been calling it the, for the collaborative artists, the artists that they don't know, have never met, but the one that at the end will have produced whatever they decide is their finished work. But when Jackie and Susan and Janet begin to do their judging component, they only want to see an artist statement from one person, and that will be from the collaborative artist. So today, we're interested in trying to get some good guidelines for the artists who are uh, participating. What should they write? How should they write it? How should it be approached if they've never done a collaborative piece before? So I will throw that into the hopper now for Susan and Jackie to take hold of. What is the artist statement for this particular project? When we say it's a collaborative work, how should the artist statement be created? We have to take our mind away from who we are and just say why and how and what we've created. So Jackie, why don't you tell us more about collaborating and writing? I've collaborated um, several times, recently with another fiber artist named Deidre Shira. So we had a show at a gallery in the Netter Museum and we had to come up with um, an artist statement that reflected our work. So I've been, making baskets or contemporary baskets for 45 years. Deidre is about, about the same, maybe a little bit longer. In some ways, writing the artist statement is, this, is a collaboration as well. I have one that Deidre and I wrote for the museum, um, and we had a, just a one paragraph artist statement that talked about our work that we made for that show. So the name of our show is called Connections, um, and we wrote, age, wisdom, the accumulation of experience, and its imprint on the vessel we call the human body have interested artists Deidre Shira and Jackie Abrams for many decades. Working collaboratively to create forms that reflect the human image, Shira prints images of her original Fabric on Threads works. Abrams deconstructs these images and then weaves and reconnects them. The results are subtle, strongly textured vessels representative of the character the human body gains with experience and time. We were trying to talk about the work that we created together. Deidre came with her experience, I came with my experience. What we created was something that neither one of us could have done on our own. And we put it as in some interview, we said one plus one equals three, melding of the two of us. That's a great example of what we will be looking for as a judge. You acknowledge the, the individuals that were there and, and you talked about their processes, but not we did this and this is what. You, you incorporated it in the um, discussion of the end product or the, the new um, entity just wonderfully. I, that's definitely what we're looking for. That comment that one plus one equals three is I think the point he was thinking about in the beginning, you're, you're finishing up with some entity that wasn't there to begin with. I'd been calling it the third artist up to now. Uh, and then we thought, oh gee, well, there's going to be maybe in some cases more than two artists working mm -hmm. together. So we called it the collaborative artist, artist statement. Joe and I collaborated on a piece when we mm -hmm. launched this first one. And it was an interesting experience, but I'd be interested to know what makes you decide to, to collaborate or not, and what, what's the good, bad, and the ugly about collaboration for you? Mostly, I would say I love collaboration. It's sort of like when you're on, on a committee and the committee works well together and 
you give an idea and the other person gives an idea and the other person gives an idea and you add them all up and you end up with an idea that nobody on their own could have thought of but together you came up with this fabulous idea because you built on each other's work. That's how I feel about collaboration. I've learned a lot over these years of collaborating. I know that I meld better with certain personalities. I don't want to be just an engineer for their ideas. It has to be a mutual give and take. And I have to be interested in their work. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a thing that people who ask me, I have to really be interested in their work. Now I'm, I'm taking a break from collaboration for a while, but I would definitely go back to it. I feel like what you get out of it, it makes you think, it makes me think of my work in a different way. It makes me think of different things to do or different ways to look at what I have grown to think of as my ordinary work all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I look at it through the eyes of another person. I thrive on um, mutually um, interested people on a topic and, and what, as Jackie said, you can bounce ideas off and, and go in directions. I'm not, a, I'm not a committee person where there are hierarchies and we have to wait for somebody else to approve, et cetera, et cetera. I just want really spontaneous people with, with a unique, and mutual mission, and and I'm on for that. I, I love to network, I love to combine people. So that's my collaborative efforts, and, and I respect other people, and I agree. I learn so much from other people. My hesitancy in collaborating in my artwork is distance. Mm -hmm. I'm isolated. I'm in West Virginia. I don't have an opportunity, and for me, I would want to work in a mutually in one studio with someone back and forth and back and forth sharing again because i like immediate uh growth it's interesting you say that because judy and i are on opposite sides of the country through this collaboration that we did in 2017 leading up into the ex exhibition in 2018 we spoke it was before zoom there was no zoom but we did have skype so we sort of had daily sessions on Skype, um, dragging in our pieces of fabric and holding up, uh, you know, drawings and uh, shipping bits of textile from one side of the country to the other so that because we wanted to do something that in the end was going to be cohesive and, and we felt that our styles are so different, you know, uh, we're, we're sort of a bit different in every way. But, and that was a challenge because you can't have one person being dominant and saying, you know, this is what we're going to do. And then you just fall in and go along and, and be a maker for that person. Um, so we both stood our ground and stood up for our ideas and they were. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they came together as, as a unit, but individual parts. For me, being willing to put your ego in your pocket Mm -hmm. And to look at the world from somebody else's shoes and try to get into their headspace while keeping your own. So there are some interesting challenges there. And then that finally all has to come together in this third artist, collaborative artist statement about the work. I would also like to talk about the distance. When I did those, my two long-term projects with other artists, they were obviously nearby. But my very first project was with a friend in Seattle and I'm in Vermont. So that's pretty far apart. And if this was in the year 2000, so we had email, but we didn't have Skype. We didn't, but, but we're both basket teachers. So she was sometimes on the East Coast and I was sometimes on the West Coast teaching. So we would get together I remember we were in my studio and we did this and we did, you know, we painted and we did this and we decided what each, we gave assignments to both of us. And then I was in Seattle teaching and we saved time to work in her studio with materials that we had created to bring to knowing that we were going to do that in Seattle. So I think there are, if some people who want to apply for the show, don't live near to each other. I think there are creative ways to, to, to do that. Questions we've been asked 
have made us realize that people may not be addressing the theme. That's one of the things that you as jurors would need to look at. We will be addressing how they have, um, have looked at the theme, what right. materials they are using, certainly their techniques, their overall composition, so then the end item. And after judging each of those by categories, we're going to look at that statement and see if that statement adds some more information for us, but validates what we've already seen in the piece. Thanks to both Susan and Jackie for taking the time and really helping to clarify who the third artist is. Can I just add another little piece of trivia here? Yep. The third juror, Janet DeBoer. Yeah. I have a matching tattoo with hers. Cool. This is mine. I've got one too, but yours. Yours is a little too high.